Hello everyone and welcome back to Mozzie's Kitchen. I am Wolfman Mozzie and today we are continuing the Dungeons and Dragons theme and diving into another meal. Today we're going to be making tavern steak, underdark lotus with fire lichen spread, potato leek soup, and dwarven flatbread. Let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Now with the underdark lotus with fire lichen spread, what we're first going to want to do is just go ahead and turn on the oven and preheat for 425 Fahrenheit with the rack in the center. Then we're going to go ahead and switch over to our chickpeas and our carrots. I want to drain the chickpeas, rinse them, cut the carrots up into bite-sized pieces. Then we're going to want to arrange both on a baking sheet and then spread a little cumin, cayenne, olive oil on it and evenly spread it out throughout the baking sheet and we're gonna go ahead and throw that in the oven and cook it bake it for about 25 minutes once the carrots and chickpeas have been baked we're gonna go ahead and transfer that to a blender or food processor add water lemon juice tahini and the remaining olive oil then we're going to go ahead and blend it. Adding more water, about a tea. Adding more water, about a tablespoon at a time, until it's a nice, smooth blend. Now, the recipe actually says that you're going to serve it with radishes and sliced cucumbers. I'm actually just using the dwarven bread. We're going to use that instead. Once that's done, go ahead and put it in a bowl, set it off to the side. I put mine in the fridge just to keep it chilled, but it can be room temperature as well. After it's blended, I taste tested it, and I wanted a little bit more kick to mine, so I went ahead and added some Cajun seasoning, uh, but that's completely up to you. Now we're gonna go ahead and start on the Dwarven flatbread. In a large mixing bowl, you're gonna wanna go ahead and add the flour, the baking powder, the baking soda, salt, and the herb blend. I just used an Italian herb blend that was pre-mixed, but you can use separate herbs and mix them together. That's really up to you. You wanna go ahead and whisk all these ingredients together then make a well in the center and add the olive oil and yogurt. And then with a wooden spoon, just go ahead and mix all of that. I resorted to mixing it with my hands, but either works just fine. Once that's fully mixed, you're going to go ahead and flour your hard surface. Go ahead and scoop out the dough and knead it until it's smooth and uniform. Adding a tiny bit of flour if needed. It's too sticky. Preheat your oven to 200 degrees. This is just going to allow you to keep the bread warm as you're cooking each individual. Then go ahead and divide the dough into eight equal portions. Gently roll out each portion into a ball. I want to go ahead and use a rolling pin and roll out the dough into the desired shape, desired thickness. They have specific uh, dimensions, ideal thickness on the recipe, but I just went loosey goosey and I rolled it out to my desired shape and size. I tried to get it kind of the same thickness as non bread, if you're familiar with that, but I just kind of felt what's right until it looked good. Once you have the desired shape, you're going to go ahead and take a cast iron skillet, go ahead and warm it up, add some oil until it's simmering. Hey everyone, uh, editor Mozzie here. I goofed and I didn't actually record me cooking the dwarven flatbread on the cast iron skillet. So instead, I'm just going to continue the footage of me rolling out the dough. Sorry, I'm still new at this, so I will try and be better in the future. Okay, back into it. Making sure that the oil coats the entire cast iron then you can go ahead and start cooking the dough. You can do them one at a time. My cast iron was actually big enough to do about three at a time, but it's really up to you. You wanna cook it for about three to four minutes until it's spotty brown, and then flip it and do the same on the other side. 
Once that's done, go ahead and transfer it to the baking sheet in the oven, and then just rinse and repeat until you have all the bread cooked up. All right, now switching gears to the potato leek soup. You're gonna to wanna to start off with the bacon, so just go ahead and take a large, heavy pot, bring it up to a medium heat, fry up that bacon, then go ahead and remove that with a spatula, put it off to the side, and then with that remaining oil that's already in the pot, you just wanna go ahead and throw the leeks, celery, thyme into that pot, and let it cook in the baking until the vegetables are softened, which will take about five minutes. Then you're gonna to wanna to add the potatoes, the broth, a teaspoon of salt. I actually didn't add the salt because I was using just regular broth and it was already had enough sodium in it. So that's up to you, depending on how salty you want it or if you're using non-sodium broth. Then you're gonna to wanna to let that simmer until the potatoes are soft, which will take about 15 to 20 minutes. Mine took a little bit longer, but it's really just dependent on your potatoes. So once those potatoes have softened up, you're gonna go ahead and remove the pot from the heat. And then you can either do this in one of two ways. You can use a immersion blender and blend until smooth, or you can take portions of the soup and put them into a blender and blend them in batches until all of them are smooth consistency and add them back into the pot. The immersion blender is easier, but not everyone has an immersion. All right, once that's all mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and stir in the cream simmer until slightly thickened and takes about five minutes and then go ahead and taste it you can adjust the taste if you need some pepper or if you need some salt just go ahead and add it that time then go ahead and put the pot on a low heat I'm just gonna go ahead and switch over to the main dish I'm gonna go ahead and take a skillet put it over medium heat warm it up add onions and a pinch of salt go ahead and saute those onions it takes about four minutes and you want to add the garlic and thyme Cook them continuously stirring until it's fragrant, which takes about a minute. It doesn't take very long at all. Now the recipe calls for ground beef and lamb. Uh, we didn't have access to lamb, so we just substitute with pork instead. Either works, but what you're going to want to do is in a large bowl, take your ground beef, in our case ground pork, and mix it all together. Add the onion mixture, a teaspoon and a half of salt, and a teaspoon of pepper. Just mix it. I mixed it with my hands, but again, wooden spoon is fine too. Then you're going to want to divide the mixture. It depends on how much ground meat you have. Uh, we got about eight patties out of it, but you're going to want to portion it to about six ounce portions uh, or just kind of like a normal hamburger size. You're going to want to roll them into a ball, cover, and then go ahead and put them in the refrigerator. If you're not ready to cook them, you can cook these on a charcoal grill but it is the dead of winter here and we do not have access to our grill. So I went ahead and just grilled them on a cast iron skillet. It would depend on how rare you want the meat to be. Uh, I prefer medium, so about a total of six minutes to cook. Or if you have a thermometer, it'll reach a temperature between 135 to 140 Fahrenheit. If you don't have a thermometer and you're unsure, you can go ahead and cut into it a little bit, but I usually just cook it until it's starting to get blackened and then flip it and do the same on the other side. And once that's done, go ahead and transfer it to a plate. Let them sit for about three minutes and they're ready to serve. Now this dish is supposed to have a dill yogurt sauce and an olive and fig sauce. I actually chose just to do the dill and yogurt sauce. I didn't think it would really have much benefit to both, but that's again, personal preference. Dill sauce was really easy to make while the tavern steak was resting went ahead and took a small bowl, whisked together yogurt, relish. We actually didn't have relish, so I just chopped up some pickles and diced them real fine Put in there. Shallot, dill, half teaspoon of salt, and pepper to taste. I prefer a little bit more pepper uh, than most, so I added a healthy dose of pepper. And mix that all together, uh, put it in the fridge so it stayed nice and chill until we were ready to there you have it. I was very pleased how this meal turned out. The yogurt sauce actually was part of my favorite of the entire meal. It went so well with the tavern steak. The soup was not as strong as I thought it was gonna be. I've never had leek soup before, but it being a member of the onion family, I thought it was gonna be a little more pungent, but it was actually nice and mild. The bacon was an, a lovely touch. And I really do recommend it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully I see you in the next one.